Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. I'm a big fan of the artist Creator Kent, so I was super excited recently when one of my favourite YouTube channels, The Art Assignment, released a video about her work and life. I'll leave a link in the trousers of this video, which is my favourite new description for the doobly-doo. I love Karita's work because it was political and had a point, but it was also full of hope. She was able to see the best in things while recognising the worst, and she made work that was challenging but also joyous. Later in her life, she started making little watercolour paintings of the world around her. One of the tools that Karita used in her work and her teaching was a simple cutout viewfinder. I made one of these from an orange juice carton and took it outside to paint the landscapes around my home. I've done plenty of watercolour plein air painting before, but this was my first time taking out oil paints. I spent some time figuring out what I'd need to take with me before packing everything up and taking it outside, and I ended up not using everything that I took out with me. I took out a plastic palette with a lid, recycled from a box of dates, and into it I put a small selection of paints, brushes and pencils. When all was said and done, the things that I actually ended up using were zinc white paint, chosen over the titanium because it's more transparent and it worked better for my subject, cadmium yellow light, alizarin crimson lake, raw umber and prussian blue. And from all those colours I could mix any colour that I needed, including black. I also took out ultramarine, but realised when I looked around that the Prussian blue would be a better choice to mix the greens that I needed. I ended up only using one brush and one palette knife. The brush was a size 14 flat brush, which I could use for both broad and precise marks, and I just wiped it clean with a rag when I needed to, rather than using the brush cleaner that I took out. The other bits and pieces that I used were my viewfinder, a bottle of Sennelier Green for Oil Liquid Medium, which is non-toxic and makes my paints more fluid, an apron with lots of pockets, and a sheet of Fabriano Petura paper for acrylic and oil painting, masked off with some low-tech washi tape. I don't have an easel currently, which I almost used as an excuse to not go out, but instead I grabbed my music stand, which was a little wobbly but worked a treat. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Leonie, you live in Cork, Ireland, where everything is green and beautiful and lovely. And yes, that's true. I walked maybe 100 metres from my house to get this view. But every place has its own character regardless of the setting. And the point of using the viewfinder is that it can help you narrow down and highlight the things around you in a new way. You can use the viewfinder on a camera in the same way, but staring at something for a long time and drawing from life rather than a picture makes you observe the shifts in light differently and the low fineness of the cutout seems to make everything a little bit more accessible. When I'd chosen my first view, I grabbed a coloured pencil and did a really simple line drawing of the main shapes I could see through the cutout. In these paintings, I wanted to focus on the geometry and the colour of the fields around my house and I was less concerned with capturing small details while making my painting look exactly like a photograph. For each painting I experimented with a different coloured pencil for the underdrawing, usually choosing one that contrasted with the colours in the landscape, so that I could use those lines as a feature instead of trying to completely hide them. With the drawing done, I spent a few minutes mixing up larger batches of colour with my palette knife. And then while I was painting, I fine-tuned those colours by mixing a little with my brush when I needed to. I also poured a small amount of my medium onto the palette and used it to change the consistency of my paint when I needed to, making it a touch more fluid and spreadable.
One of the nice things about painting outside is that it adds a constraint of time. I was forced to paint pretty quickly and not concern myself too much with the fine details. But the great thing about oils is that the paints stay wet for a long time, so I was able to make some small changes the next day when I looked over everything. All up, all four images took me about an hour to paint outside. One of the other great things about oil paints and another reason that I'm using the recycled bait box as a palette is that I can put the lid on and keep the paints in my freezer to stop them drying out. I wanted to come back to my landscapes and add some text and by using the same colour mixes I was guaranteed to have colours in the right tonal range. Now I'm primarily a printmaker, it's what I studied at art school, so most of what I know about painting is self-taught. I did the usual thing, well what I assume is the usual thing, of buying a set of oil paints from a newsagent on holiday as a kid, not understanding anything about how oil paints work, and I painted them directly into a flimsy sketchbook, where they took about 10 years to dry and bled completely through the paper. As a result, I was mostly terrified of oil painting, and I avoided it until a few years ago. Turns out that oil painting is not scary at all, and it's really, really fun, and if you're interested in trying it out, you should really give it a go. There are just a few things to be aware of, primarily using properly prepared surfaces like canvas, board or paper that has been primed properly, or paper like the one that I'm using that's been coated to withstand the oil in the paint. If you're worried about fumes from solvents used in mixing paints and cleaning up, there are a lot of eco-friendly products around these days that are much healthier and still very easy to use. The paints I'm using here are Old Holland, which are high quality, inexpensive paints made with beautiful pigments, but I wouldn't recommend starting out with these paints. I first tried some inexpensive student grade paints in the same basic mixing colours that I have now to see if I'd like it, and I only upgraded after a few months of using those. It's only what it shows, it's only what it knows, it's only what it's supposed to be, it's what it's supposed to be.
art isn't just about the technicalities of painting or drawing though. For me, art is about how we relate to the world around us. I can paint all the landscapes and pretty things I want, but at the end of the day, art needs to explore ideas and ask questions. Corita Kent certainly didn't use her viewfinder just to look for imagery and nice layouts, but to use art to help solidify a worldview. Her art was political, and while not all art needs to be about big ideas, it should have humanity at its heart if you want others to be able to relate to it. While I was preparing for this video, a man from my home country with a head full of hate walked into a mosque in New Zealand and murdered 50 people. Waking up around the other side of the world and reading that news left me broken and I walked through the fields around my house in tears that day. I'm an immigrant in Ireland, living only 140 kilometres from the place my ancestors were born. They left after the famine to start a new life in Australia, and now, 160 or so years later, I've returned to a country that has changed drastically, with huge amounts of that change happening in the last 10 years. Ireland's not all pots of gold and rainbows, obviously. The housing crisis happening that no one quite knows how to fix, and a system called direct provision for refugee housing that leaves a lot to be desired. But for the most part, Ireland feels like a place that has hope. I have a lot of friends who are artists and something I see a lot is the type of despondency that kicks in when something awful happens on a global scale. Many of us stop making things and start to feel selfish and question whether what we're doing is useful or worthwhile. We may not be doctors curing cancer or scientists developing vaccines to save hundreds of thousands of children from premature death, but making art is more of a long game. Our worth lies in making the people around us think and even if we don't succeed in doing that all the time, we can at least make something beautiful that brightens someone's world somewhere. If we're lucky, we get to do both. Painting earth landscapes is a little out of my comfort zone. I normally draw pictures of space, and then I choose poems and text to add to those images to relate them back to earth and humanity somehow. But these paintings were the other way around. I went through my poetry books looking for something appropriate, and then I picked up my copy of Carl Sagan's Magnificent Cosmos and I knew I needed to use some of the text from his piece about the pale blue dot, visible in the last photograph that the Voyager 1 spacecraft took of Earth on Valentine's Day in 1990, before the cameras were turned off. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. Like it or not, for the moment, the earth is where we make our stand. I should apologize. Got stuck in my throat or something. This is an awkward time. Would you prefer a note or something? your details in a little notebook and I'll compromise a stupid conversation because I am still quite fond of you All right.
Will he be able to go to work? Wherever we are on that dot, that's home. Sometimes it seems large and sometimes it seems small. Every so often it pays to go outside with a piece of paper that's got a hole cut in it to see what's there. It was a mistake. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and comment. But more importantly, go out and make something good.